The crowd screams as the best-selling author, Jacob Jake Turner, gets out of the car for his book signing event. His newly released novel entitled, The Final Midnight, is extremely successful, and fans can't wait to have their books signed up with personalized dedications. Some wear the costume of characters in the novel, while others request their version of the story to be included in the next chapter. Jake is an attractive guy, and one of her fans feels brokenhearted to know he will be home for Christmas to see his girl, Ava. Jake lives alone at his place with Ava, his cute puppy. He does not have a girlfriend. In fact, it's been a long time since he dated. Books, antique typewriters, vinyl records, and old turntables fill Jake's home. When he's in the city, Svetlana, a hard-working housemaid, takes care of Ava in the house. Jake is grateful to have her, and gives her the pay she deserves. Fan mails piled up when Jake left, but it's fine for him, since he has nothing to do on the holidays. Jake opens them one by one, and wakes up the next day, still seated in the living area. Early in the morning, Jake's receives a call from his mom's attorney, Matt Segreto. He is an executor of his mother's estate, and wants to meet him next week to sign some papers. Mr. Sergito informs him that his mom, Lois, passed away last week, and she left all her properties, including the house where he grew up, to him. Jake lost contact with Lois for several years, because they were not on good terms. He is saddened to hear this, and immediately drives to his hometown to meet the attorney. Jake welcomes the lawyer to settle the property. Before going inside, a strange lady across the street catches Jake's attention. A pile of scraps, boxes, and papers welcomes Jake to the living area. Mr. Segreto informs him that, according to a neighbor, his mom was mentally ill, hoarded things, and never left the house. Jake finds the piano covered with a cloth, which he played with when he was a kid. The attorney cuts Jake's emotional breakdown by sharing how his wife loves his books. She even instructed him to bring the novel to be signed when he meets Jake. Jake is pleased to write a dedication for her and throws some jokes along the conversation. Surprisingly, Jake finds his old room tidy. He loves basketball, and his mom was able to keep his shirt and ball. Jake's typewriter and books are displayed there too. Amongst everything, his childhood photo with his mom and brother moves him. The next day, Jake greets his old neighbor, Ellie, on her porch. They have not seen each other in two decades, after he left the house at 17. Ellie never expected him to visit, since he is famous now. Jake is the little boy who would play Scrabble at her place back then, and she knew all along that he would be a renowned writer someday. A cut elm tree in front of the house catches Jake's attention. This makes him emotional. Thankfully, a group of caroling kids lightens up his mood. Jake bids goodbye to Ellie after sharing how messy their house is. He will return the next day to declutter another room. Jake goes to the cemetery to visit his late brother, Benji's, grave. Jake cries as he tells him that he's lonely and misses him a lot. Benji was only seven years old when he passed away. After the whole night at the cemetery, Jake returns early to clean the house again. He is starving, but when he opens the refrigerator, spoiled food and a stinky smell welcome him. Outside, the lady Jake saw last time stands across the street, while looking at their house. Ellie arrives with a tomato soup that Jake loved when he was a kid. Jake is grateful to her, because Ava loves the meal too. Ellie jokingly tells him to include her in his novels. Jake is surprised she is a fan of his books, so he lets her enumerate some of the characters she can recall. One of Ellie's replies is the father of a soldier, a minor character in Jake's The Final Midnight novel. Jake recalls his father, Scott, whom he calls a minor character in his life, after he left when they were kids. Ellie believes Jake loves his dad, even after everything he did to them. She notices that he wears Scott's old watch, which fits perfectly on his wrist. Jake denies that his father is important to him, and hides the watch. Ellie shares that his dad visited his mom's burial, and she's sure Scott was hoping to see him there too. After the deep conversation, Ellie asks for advice, because she wants to join an online dating site. Jake shows his full support, and offers to write her profile to attract men. Ellie is pleased to have a famous writer neighbor, and can't wait to find a guy using the profile Jake wrote. Jake resumes cleaning, after Ellie leaves. He discovers a scrapbook with childhood photos of his brother. Jake can't stop smiling, as he reminisces about the good old days. He flips the pages, and it's his pictures this time. The unfinished scrapbook saddens him, because it was made after his brother passed away. Jake discovers a notebook with handwritten content, so he keeps this in his bag. Ellie knocks on the door, so he tells her to come in, because he can't open it for her. The door opens, but it's not Ellie. It's the strange girl across the street. She is Rachel, who is searching for her mom, whom she never met. Someone told her that her mother works as a nanny at Mr. and Mrs. Turner's house. Jake confirms she is in Turner's residence, but he can't recall that a woman stayed with them. Rachel is funny and friendly, and it's easy for her to make the serious Jake laugh. Jake accompanies her to the car, and apologizes for not having the information she needs. Rachel has already left, when Jake realizes Ellie might know her mom. Jake runs to follow her car, but he's slower than his dog. Fortunately, Rachel stops when she notices Ava beside the vehicle, running. Jake brings her to Ellie's house. However, she seems to have a date with an old guy. Jake giggles, because Ellie found a man right after she joined the dating site. 
Jake suggests Rachel leave her number so that he can call her the next day. Rachel insists on waiting for Ellie in her car, because it will be a long drive if she leaves. Jake is about to leave her outside, but she looks hungry. They dine in an Italian restaurant that Jake likes, because his mom used to take him there. Rachel's Italian accent amuses Jake as she talks to the waiter. There he discovers that she is a language major, can also speak French and German, and knows few Mandarin words. Rachel recently applied to the UN as a translator, but she has doubts about taking it. Suddenly, Rachel receives a call, and excuses herself for a minute. An old friend, Dion, notices Jake, and looks happy to see him again. Rachel reveals she's engaged to a tax attorney, who proposed with a cigar ring, since she's not into diamonds. There is no schedule for the wedding yet, but they will talk about it later. Jake notices that Rachel stutters, as she talks about her healthy relationship with her boyfriend. They return to Jake's place, but Ellie is not home yet. Rachel pleads with Jake to stay in his house, and find a photo or card that her mom owns. Inside, the piano catches Rachel's attention. Jake shares that his mom forced him to enroll in piano lessons, because she loved to see him play. Jake is good at piano, even if he denies it at first. Surprisingly, Rachel is a great singer, and after putting on a little performance, they declutter things one by one, with the hope that Rachel finds her mom's information. The next day, a car's engine wakes Jake up. He checks it out from the window, and finds Ellie and her date kissing. Jake accompanies Rachel to Ellie to ask if she knows her mom. Ellie remembers her, because she is a stay-in babysitter for Jake and his brother. Rachel's mom was pregnant then, and she was only 17 years old. Unfortunately, Ellie forgot her name, but she's confident it has something to do with Christmas. Ellie suggests Jake take Rachel to his dad in Vermont, because he can definitely provide them with more information. Ellie wants Jake to reconcile with his estranged dad, and tells him there's no harm in talking again. Jake gets mad, because he doesn't want to talk to the man, who left 35 years ago. Rachel starts her car to leave, after Jake walks out. She understands Jake's situation, and she can't force him to talk to his dad for her. Jake runs barefoot under the rain to apologize to Rachel, for how he acted earlier. It's fine for Rachel, but she will visit Vermont to seek answers from Scott. Rachel invites Jake to go with her, so that he can also ask his dad the questions, that bothered him for years. Jake opens up that he doesn't know what to say, after the long separation. Rachel offers to help him converse with Scott, if he joins her. The next day, Jake packs his things to visit his dad in Vermont. Outside, Ellie thought he will return to the city, so she wishes him all the best. Jake informs her that he will visit his father with Rachel. He believes that the universe rewards the brave, so he wants to try. Ellie is delighted to hear this, and introduces Ian, the man she met on the dating site. On the trip, Jake doesn't understand why Rachel prefers a map over ways. He recalls his idea about a book, where a newly wedded couple goes on a journey for honeymoon. But the ex-boyfriend manipulates the GPS, and it leads them to danger. Rachel, on the other hand, likes Jake, because he listens when she tells him directions. Her fiancé, Alan, is the opposite, he would be annoyed, and would say to her, that he doesn't need a co-pilot. In the middle of the trip, Rachel admits she doesn't know Jake, and she only looked up his information on Google, to make her sound knowledgeable on his background. Rachel is amazed by his achievements. His books being translated into different languages, shows his popularity. At the gasoline station, Jake requests Rachel to get his wallet, while he fills the tank. A notebook falls from his bag, which catches Rachel's attention. She flips a random page, and sees matching information Ellie gave earlier. Rachel's mom is Noel, and it's her diary. Jake did not check this last time, because he thought it was his mom's, so he kept it. Rachel is teary, and reads it throughout the trip. It turns out that Noel was pregnant with an unexpected baby, Rachel. She left the house, because her parents believed it was shameful to bear a child before marriage. Fortunately, Noel met Jake's kind parents, who gave her shelter and a job, as their kid's nanny. Noel describes Benji as an energetic seven-year-old boy, while Jake is a quiet kid who loves books. Rachel wonders where Benji is, and asks Jake about this. Jake composes himself, as he tells her how he lost his brother. They have a giant elm tree in their front yard, and Benji loved to climb it. It was after a snowstorm, when he went up to hang his favorite ornament. The story is unfinished, because Jake can't talk anymore, out of grief. Rachel holds his hand to comfort him. She understands how he feels, because even if three decades have passed, time can't heal everything. Two months passed after Noel left home, and she never heard a word from her parents, or the father of her baby, Peter. She spent all night crying, and little Jake would hug her, as if he knew she was in pain. Rachel becomes emotional as she reads this part, because she knows the Jake that her mom loves so much. They stop at a diner, where Rachel asks Jake why is successful, an attractive man like him is single. Jake shares he feels safe being alone, after dating different girls when he was younger. He tried to have a long-term relationship, but they all ended eventually. The waitress suggests they stay for the night, because they can't make it to Vermont, 
before the storm hits. While Rachel walks Ava into the town, she receives a call from Alan, revealing that they had misunderstandings after she left home. He can't understand how important it is for Rachel to find information about her mom. Alan apologizes and tells her he has already planned their engagement party. He plans to do it at her favorite Mexican restaurant on Valentine's Day and is about to settle the payments tomorrow. Rachel forgives him but requests not to do anything until she returns. Meanwhile, Jake inquires about available rooms at the inn they will be staying at. Fortunately, two rooms are left, but the funny front desk clerk teases Jake that those are connected. Rachel becomes interested in Jake's novels, so she visits a bookstore with Ava. The owner highly recommends she check The Green Eyes of Paris, since she has never read anything he wrote. The store owner loves Jake's books, but it's hard to find copies of them, since they're sold out most of the time. Rachel is lucky to have the remaining copy, which she buys without Jake's knowledge. Jake and Rachel end the night by watching a free classic movie in the town. In the end, Jake is writing his draft when he hears a loud noise in Rachel's room. Rachel opens the door, but she's fine. After this, Rachel leaves her room open, which tempts Jake to look at her from time to time. Jake smiles because he catches her reading his book. The next day, Rachel admits that she was up all night reading his book, but hides the book from him in case she ends up hating it. Jake laughs at her upfront doubt about his book. He challenges her to comment on anything, even if the comment is negative. Rachel admits she loves the story because it's a mix of suspense, drama, and romance. Their trip to Vermont continues, and Rachel reads her mom's diary at the same time. She reaches the part on the day she was born. Noel gave birth to a baby girl, but her parents suggested not to name it so that she won't be attached. Without their knowledge, Noel named her newborn Angelica because she was her angel. Rachel gasps for air as she processes everything. She is mad at her mom and requests Jake to pull over. Jake warns her it's freezing outside, but she does not listen. Rachel questions her mom. Why did she write everything if she abandoned her after? Jake calms her down and tells her that Noel may have thought that one day, the diary would find its way to her daughter. Jake hugs Rachel to keep her warm and they almost kiss. A rabbit catches Ava's attention and she runs to get it. Jake commands her to stop, but she doesn't listen. Rachel screams her name, and this time, she returns. Ava listens to Rachel more than to him, and this amuses Jake. After the long drive, they finally arrive at Scott's place. Jake recalls his favorite line, the universe rewards the brave, before he steps out of the car to talk to his dad. He knocks on the door, but no one opens it. Jake discovers his dad is not there when he sees a note outside. Jake spends the whole night riding in the car, while Rachel sleeps with Ava. The next day, Jake finds his dad in the backyard, and he looks busy cutting a tree. Scott is speechless to see him. Ellie informed him last time that his son will arrive, so he prepared his house. Scott is emotional, as he tells Jake he is cutting a Christmas tree for him. Jake helps him carry this to the house. Scott receives a call from work, and while he answers it, Jake looks around and sees a picture of him with Benjamin and their mom. After the call, Scott grabs the chance to apologize to him for what he did to the family. He also takes out Jake's favorite Christmas lights he bought a long time ago to install them together. Jake trembles out of mixed emotions and confronts his dad about why he disappeared and left them. Scott has no chance to respond because Jake walks out. Rachel calms him down and instructs him to take a deep breath. She looks him in the eyes and says that if he leaves, he will do the same thing his father did. Rachel challenges him to be the first adult member of the family, not to take the exit. Inside the house, Scott explains everything to Jake. Two days before they lost Benji, there was a snowstorm. He knows how Benji loves climbing the tree to hang his favorite ornament for Christmas. Scott admits that if only he stopped him, he would still be alive up to this day. The old elm tree collapsed, and that's the reason he fell. Scott can't forget the cracking sound of the branch, so he cut the tree down months after. Soon after Noel left the house, he and Lois couldn't comfort each other anymore, and it reached the point that one of them had to go. Scott wanted to take Jake, but he was the only treasure Lois has. He also believed that Jake was the key for his wife to move on from their loss. Silence fills the house, but Jake hears his dad crying inside as he recalls everything. Scott changes the topic and gives the Christmas lights to his son. He knows how Jake loves to decorate trees. Jake smiles and helps him out this time. The father and son bond again, after three decades. They put up the lights as they recall the good old days. Scott tried to reach him through phone calls and text messages, however, he did not get a response. He also wrote several letters to him, but nothing returned. Jake never knew about this because his mom did not mention a thing. Rachel is delighted to see Jake and his dad light up the tree together. Scott welcomes Rachel and cooks a meal for them. Noel was a godsend for Scott. She was the glue that kept their family intact. Suddenly, he recalls that Noel sent a letter to him years ago and shows it to Rachel. It's a wedding invitation, and Rachel is delighted to see her mom's full name and address. Scott accompanies Jake and Rachel to the car and tells them they look great as a couple. Jake denies this because Rachel is engaged. Scott requests Rachel to update him on her search for Noel. 
Jake bids goodbye to his dad and offers a warm hug. Scott can't contain his happiness when he notices that Jake is wearing his watch and hugs him tightly. In the car, Jake holds Rachel's hands to thank her for the motivation to restore his relationship with his dad. Rachel cries as he reads the final lines of her mom's diary. Jake was right. Noel wrote the diary, hoping her daughter would read it in the future and feel loved. Rachel asks Jake if it's best to call her mom or show up spontaneously. Jake suggests she get some sleep and decide the next day. They stop by the Candlelight Village Inn to rest. There's only a room left, and Jake is reluctant to take it, since Rachel is engaged. However, she is the one who insists. During a candlelight dinner, Rachel reveals that it's her birthday. Jake calls the inn staff to request a cake or dessert with a candle. His sweet gesture melts Rachel's heart, and she kisses him while dancing. Jake wakes up alone the next day and discovers a letter from Rachel, inserted in Noel's diary. Rachel confesses she was attracted to him the first day they met. Last night, she was confused because Alan loves her, but she slept with another guy. Rachel believes it's better to part ways since she's engaged. In the end, she is grateful to Jake for the journey that made her realize how much her mom loves her. Jake visits Noel at the hospital, where she works as a nurse. Noel is delighted to see him again after three decades of no communication. However, she is saddened to hear that his mom, Lois, passed away. Jake informs Noel that he met her daughter and her name is Rachel. After Rachel read the diary, she felt connected and wanted to see her. Noel sheds tears after hearing this because she did not expect Rachel to forgive her right away. Noel tells Jake that if ever he meets her daughter again, he should tell her that she wants to communicate if she's comfortable with it. Rachel celebrates Christmas with her foster parents. Jake calls her, but she doesn't pick up the phone. Rachel's parents wonder why she is canceling Alan's calls. The last time they spoke about it, she said they had already fixed their relationship. Rachel assures them Alan will arrive soon, and they will talk. Meanwhile, Jake repeatedly rings her phone, so Rachel excuses herself from her parents. She tells Jake not to bother. She has a fiancé, and it's better to cut their connection. Ava barks, and Rachel realizes that Jake is right in front of the house. Jake confesses his love to Rachel, but she pleads for him to leave. Jake tells her he will only go if she says she doesn't love him. Rachel sobs because she loves Jake, but has Alan. Jake sheds tears as he hears her say she doesn't love him. The next day, Jake packs things in his mom's house before he returns to the city. There, he discovers a pile of letters his dad sent. He opens them, and it makes him realize that Scott is telling the truth. Ellie and Ian visit Jake and ask how the journey went. Jake is delighted to inform them that he reconciled with his dad, and Rachel found out more about her mom. Ellie invites Jake over for dinner, but he refuses because he has to leave soon. Ellie gives him a Christmas present to make up for it. It's a painting of their house with the healthy elm tree in the yard. Jake becomes emotional because the tree reminds him of his brother and family. Outside, Jake takes a final glance at the house before he leaves. Ava barks and a lady in a red coat catches Jake's attention. It's Rachel and she stands across the street like she did when they first met. 